don't need to ask what he's thinking. Larry Fedorik is on News Talk 610 CKTV. Over the weekend, we turned the clocks back one hour, except at the beer market. They apparently turned their clocks back about 45 years, asking female staff to wear the new uniform, a skimpy, thin little blue dress. The men in the new uniform could wear button-down shirt, jeans, sneakers. The old uniform, I think for male and female waitstaff alike, was black pants, black golf shirt. That's it, right? Comfortable, practical, it seems. Uh, They couldn't get a lot of reaction to some of the females who complained out of Kara Foods. Uh, One of the servers went public on CBC with Marketplace and Go Public and has since retained an employment lawyer with Robin's Applebee. Barbara Green is the lawyer who joins us now. Ms. Green, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you doing? Good. Thanks for coming on to talk about this. I was looking at the CBC story today. I actually did a blog about it as well because I can't believe this this kind of thing is still happening. Never, never mind the sexualization, but even the double standard. It's very surprising in today's day and age that this is still going on. But Kara has since, I think as you pointed out, has changed their dress code and Obviously, my client is very pleased with that result. Now, your client, Tierney Angus, am I saying that right? That's correct. She was featured in the story. Uh, Why did she hire you? I think she wanted some support. I think she was concerned about coming forward and making sure her position was as strong as possible. She also didn't receive a particularly positive response from Kara when she raised her concerns at first instance. And and again, she wasn't alone in raising concerns. There were apparently many female servers who had an issue with the dress code. So I feel she needed the support, and the CBC was certainly really helpful in putting pressure and public pressure on Kara to change the dress code. So we're very pleased with the result. Now, this dress is not... um... Well, how would you describe the dress? I don't know. It it doesn't seem practical, number one. (laughs) It certainly wasn't practical because my understanding is every time the female servers bent over, their behinds were exposed. So this was not practical. The dress was very skimpy, very tight, form-fitting, sleeveless, short. My client describes the material as being bathing suit-like. And others had described that their underwear was showing through the uniform itself. So this was quite, you know, as my client describes it, very embarrassing to wear. Did she go to her immediate superior? Not sure all the steps she took at first instance. She certainly wrote to Kara and asked for a change in the dress code. So I'm not sure how far she escalated that. Uh, I had read her very compelling letter to Kara, which was not received very positively at first instance. So Kara had defended its position at first instance. But I know that she did try to escalate the matter. Um, She also started to cover herself up at work, and that wasn't well received. Uh, Yeah, she put on a sweater or something like that? Yeah, she tried to cover up her arms, feeling uncomfortable. And she informed me that she was told to take off the the cover-up, that she was told to take off the sweater. I think part of this was not only the short, skimpy dress, but uh, high heels or boots and no thick tights as well, I think was part of it. That was her concern. I think primarily her concern was the form-fitting nature of the dress. The footwear seemed to be okay, and it was not impractical, so there was no mandated high heels or any shoe requirements of that nature. It was really the form-fitting nature that was of concern to her. And the fact that she felt her arms were completely exposed. Uh, She had tried to wear a different size of the dress, but that made her feel even more exposed. So really, there was no way way around that form-fitting dress. Now, I think you are quoted in the article as saying this is a violation of the Ontario Human Rights Code or a possible violation? Well, I would say it's a possible violation. Obviously, it hasn't been determined by the commission that the dress that was imposed was, in fact, a breach of my client's human rights. But this was the issue, is whether a dress of this nature would be considered discriminatory or discrimination based on sex pursuant to the Human Rights Code. And again, it had yet to be determined because Kara changed its position. And I commend Kara for, for changing its position so quickly 
And I also think my client, as I said before on the CBC, was extremely brave to come forward and to fight that fight. Is she still employed with Kara? She is. Okay. So she didn't storm out or any of this kind of thing? No, she dealt with it in the way that an employee ought to deal with it. She, you know, in my experience, she raised the issue directly with the employer. She made her concerns known. Um, She was not alone in her feelings, so other people had come forward as well, but she tried to give the employer a chance to change its position. And when that failed, she then went to the media. Now, I'm not saying every person should do that, and she was very brave to do that, but she saw that as being a, a, a possible outlet for her concern and she was looking to gain some public support for her position. And based on the feedback that uh, Tierney and I have been receiving, it's been primarily very positive. Well, the thing is, and I, I don't condone the, the uh, restaurant category of restaurants either, <laughs> right. but I didn't think beer market was in that category of selling the sex of it, you know, of their servers. Well, what's very important in my client's story, which may distinguish her from other restaurants, and again, I haven't done a thorough investigation of how this is playing out elsewhere, but my client had been employed for several years at the beer market before the new dress code is implemented. So for many years, the dress code, according to my client, wasn't objectionable. She had no objection to that prior existing dress code. It was only after several several years of employment that this new dress code was imposed. So I'm not sure that historically the beer market there has been any issue with respect to their dress code. My understanding is that there hadn't been. It's just in the beginning of October when this new dress code was rolled out, there were concerns by my client and other female servers as well at, at different locations of the beer market. Are there regulations that cover uh, something like a restaurant being able to issue dress codes and a uniform for their wait staff? Well, what's very interesting is that there don't appear to be any recent Human Rights Commission decisions or tribunal decisions which directly speak to the issue, nor are there are any recent court cases that deal with the issue. But what there is and what we've been quoting is a document that's been put forth and published by the Commission itself, which is entitled Human Rights at Work, and this is the 2008 edition, which specifically does deal with dress codes. And in that statement that's put forth, again, by the Commission itself, they state that it is discrimination based on sex to require female employees to wear high heels, short skirts, and tight tops. They even go further than that. They caution employers do not subject female employees to more difficult requirements than male employees and specifically do not expect them to dress provocatively to attract clients. So it does seem to be that if this issue was put forth directly to the commission, that they would comply and agree with their own statement put forward in 2008. Is this something now where you have to watch Tierney Angus and make sure now that because of her going public and the exposure she got, that she's not being treated differently now when she returns to work? Well, the good thing for Tierney is that pursuant to the code, she has protection because individuals are protected pursuant to the provisions of the code when they bring forth a complaint or file a complaint with the commission that they are not supposed to be reprimanded or punished by an employer for seeking to protect their rights pursuant to the code. Now, how that actually plays out, we just don't know. But obviously, she would be entitled, if her employment is in any way jeopardized by her coming forth with her concerns, she would have an entitlement to go forward to the commission and and make a complaint. And I would hope that Kara won't won't, uh, do anything negative to impact tyranny and her work. And, and I think that's doubtful. And I'm, right. I, you know, I don't expect that to be the case. I mean, Kara, again, I commend Kara for coming forward and changing their position so quickly. Um, and, you know, my client's obviously really happy about that. And I don't expect there to be an issue. So you're offering her support. You're not, you, there's no compensation. You're not, you know, suing for damages or anything. This is just uh, getting things right. Well, I don't, again, I don't want to go into the details about the relationship between my client and I, but uh, we had not even filed a a formal complaint with the commission. This was resolved earlier than that. So, again, we're very happy that it wasn't necessary. 
because as you can appreciate, if we make a complaint, this won't be resolved anytime soon. It can take a very long period of time. And what would my client do in the meantime? It's, it's hard to know whether she would have retained her job and, and or whether she would have opted to leave for another position. It's not so simple for every employee to go out and find alternative employment mm-hmm. in her situation. Plus, she's really enjoyed and still enjoys being employed by the beer market. She wanted to stay. Interesting. Well, thank you for your insights into this. Much appreciated. My pleasure. Barbara Green, employment lawyer with Robbins Appleby, hired by Tierney Angus, the main focus in this beer market story of the provocative uniforms that the female staff were asked to wear. And uh, I don't know, to me, I'm like, okay, good food, good decor, good service, reasonable prices. That's the draw of a restaurant to me, not how short the skirts are on the female wait staff.